Welcome my Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs and cross watchers. Welcome to your timeless path of true love reading with Extended. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. They're just my initials. I'm not bad. It's just spelled that way. I am a professional witch, a professional intuitive. I am the president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. 25 years in service at the time of this timeless recording. I'm the author of two books, actually, one called Spell Ingredients, which is only available, I'll tell you where that is in a minute, uh, but the second one I wrote, Words of Grace, I'm the author of Words of Grace from a professional witch, and chakra chapters, there are chakras in this reading, all over this reading, might be helpful, but that's the Kindle version, because the original PDF version, done with my Scorpio sister, Jill Schweitzer, as editor, hi sweetheart, uh, that one's over on Patreon, the Visual Fellini Film Fest of Chakra Color and Spectrum Graces and uh, different, it's amazing, Chakra Chapters, I love alliteration. Some of my subscribers have access to that, you can also buy it on our shop, oh my goodness gracious, Patreon gave us a shop, how cool is that, but all of my subscribers, regardless of level of subscription, get three benefits in common, number one, they get me pretty much every single morning when I send them an unlisted YouTube live stream link, so they literally can chat with me about the day's astrological weather, the magical applications, the spiritual implications, always ending with a prayer, a blessing, a little something, something to send us on our way, which is the smartest thing for me to do to start my day. Considering what I do for a living, you can just imagine. Second benefit they get in common is access to all of the extended readings, past, present, including this one, and into the future. Uh, and they're all soulmate contracts and twin flames and path of true love. Uh, and they're all juggernauts. I mean, in this series, they've all been over an hour, more or less. Uh, so if you like the detail, I'm your witch. So all of my patrons get that. You can pay-per-view on Vimeo. There's a link in the description box for the extended on Vimeo On Demand. Uh, but that $9.99 will make you a hero, literally our third level of uh, subscription on uh, Patreon for a month. The third benefit that uh, my patrons get is an extensive discount on private sessions with me, uh, spiritual counseling uh, and readings and all that stuff. We'll talk about that at the end of the video if you are of interest, but I have to say it is the wisest uh, career move I have ever made. We now have two uh, seven-day free trials for our first two levels, uh, Seeker and Human. If you would like to check us out for a week, please do. You get the daily check-ins, you get the extended reading access with the extensive discount is for subscribers you've got to stay for at least day eight <laughs> and then reach out and I'll be glad to give you the same discount that all levels of them get I love it let's move on for this reading but I have to say check it out for yourself we're having a lot of fun over there and we've got a store now a shop how cool is that so come patreon on patreon my beloved Scorpios because I'm the Archangel of Lions Markangelo Lions you know what? You just call me Mal, right? Yes, witch. Let's get to work. Uh, if you are new to my channel, we'll do some explanation for you before we get into the divination. I'm writing down all of the contracts, part one and part two, in these Path of True Love reads. So let's talk about the Path of True Love. The Path of True Love, there's a, a video, a preface I did many years ago, uh, talking about all this, a preface too. There's a link in the description box, as always. Uh, but it's essentially your hero's journey, your healing journey, your spiritual path, whatever you want to call it, through the lens of your relationship. And like a hero's journey, <laughs> you get to choose whether you want to be a villain or a hero. And it ain't much of a hero's journey without uh, demons, dragons, vampires, and villains. Right? not much of a good video game without a boss to beat in order to level up, right? So uh, regardless of the form of the relationship we're about to look at, sometimes it is rubber stamped romantic. The Libra one I just did yesterday was rubber stamped uh, romantic, but it kind of doesn't matter because you are the common denominator in all of your relationships. And the more that you heal, the more that you walk the path of true love, becoming the truth of love that we all are, the truth and the love, choice by choice by choice and decision by decision by decision, uh, to walk what I call the true love timeline or the golden timeline. There's alchemy involved. We'll get there. In fact, you're getting 15 cards in part one. You're going to get two Caroline Mace archetype cards looking at the dominant archetypes in the eighth chakra of party number one and party number two. Yes, it's contractual language because it's a contract read on the path of true love. Two people 
meeting at the crossroads, whether you know them, you know, family member, it doesn't matter, it could be anybody, uh, then we will use uh, the mythic tarot by Juliet Sherman Burke to get you a uh, uh, Celtic cross. Nothing like a good Celtic cross, right? It's very Google Maps. Right? It's very like, look down, you have free will as to what you want to do, but it's nice to see. Uh, but we're looking at that from the physical aspect, lower three chakras, all right? Eighth chakra, root sacrum solar plexus. Uh, we will look at relationships in the physical world, including your relationship to yourself, uh, solar plexus, groups, root chakra, and one-on-one uh, -on -one with another person, uh, the sacral. I know I did them out of order. Uh, and then, in the extended readings, we'll use Daughters of the Moon to get the heart, third, third eye crown, the stuff that's behind that, the feminine energy. Uh, you'll, we'll get you two whispers of love, Angela Hartfield, uh, consecrated, if you will, that deck to the higher selves of party number one and party number two. You'll hear that as it comes out. And we will end with a Matt Khan healing mantra card as always. So it doesn't matter whether you're party number one or party number two. It's for both of you. You're getting 18 more if you're jumping over to the extended, and that's minimum. But so far, I haven't had to go over that number. Uh, getting you 33 cards in total. I did math. You're welcome. Ow. So uh, let's see if we can have fun with this. I love doing the path. I love a good Celtic cross. You don't get to do it that often uh, sometimes. Yeah, but with clients, I certainly do. So uh, I guess that's about enough uh, information. Uh, let's shift to the divination. Lots of links in the description box, by the way, about twin flames and soulmates and true loves, not just mine. So if you're looking for a deeper dive, Scorpios usually are. Check some of those out. MacCon's work is really good. MacCon Healing Mantra Deck. Um, so both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath, if you will, and I promise you, I will do my best to help anybody uh, take the hero's journey of the path of true love so that they can be happier, healthier, wealthier, and wiser, which means their relationships will eventually be happily, happy, happier, healthier, wealthier, and wiser for a happier, healthier, wiser world, anchoring true love into the Earth's electromagnetic field. True love conquers all, heals all wounds, breaks all curses, ancestral and otherwise passed down for generations and generations since cavemen right? So that can only make the world a better place. So guess what? You are important, as are all of your relationships. But remember, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. You have the free will to do you. Oh, I felt good. I felt very empowering. It was almost Ted talky. So uh, let's uh, get these cards on the table. Both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. Let's get into the still point. Please take a nice deep breath. I had fun with that. Still point. <laughs> Here we go. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards. Pantheonic override. Oh. I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Scorpio collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers watching this video. Drawn to this reading. Beloved ones, what is uh, the dominant archetype? hovering over the heads in the eighth chakra, party number one and party number two for this Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign, and cross watcher, timeless path of true love read. Who do we got? Party number one, eighth chakra, showing us the shadow work indicated, the alchemy from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy, fear to love, lead having three more atoms than gold, the language of spiritual alchemy. Yeah, show me. Party number one, what's going on in their eighth chakra? And party number two uh, at the cross in the crossroads. Uh, who's party number two dealing with in their eighth chakra in this uh, timeless path of true love? Read, these are in the title. Let's see how brave you are. A rebel and a warrior? Hot. <laughs> Hot. I mean, it could be brother and sister. You know, let's not go there just yet. Uh, all archetypes are neutral, uh, and so there is a spectrum of from lead to gold, shadow to light, pain to peace. We're all somewhere on that spectrum, that percentage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can have an archetype in your eighth chakra, a reason, or a season, a reason, a season, or for your entire lifetime. Sacred contracts, Carolyn Mace. The eighth chakra system I got from uh, from her book Anatomy of the Spirit. She's one of my favorite teachers. So what she has written on these cards uh, is the shadow attribute. That's the lead. The light attribute. The 
gold. Uh, and I believe both of these are action family archetypes. If I, uh, I mean, the warrior, it, it sounds like it should be in the masculine family of archetypes, but it's not. I believe it's action family. Uh, but Rebel, I think, is as well. So let's talk about the Rebel. And if you hear some of the shadow stuff, the lead stuff, see if you can identify it in the world and see how holographically our relationships can help uh, heal this stuff in the world. Shadow attribute. Rejects legitimate authority out of anger. Rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. Now, I'll admit, my dive into the Duran Duran New Wave was certainly uh, peer pressure because I couldn't quite pull off punk at 14 years old on Long Island, but, you know, we got there eventually. Uh, uh, I mean, and that is really that, but come on, you know, rejects legitimate authority, right? And I, I've used this as an example for years with my students. I said, you know, if you know someone's, you know, working on their sobriety and you're at a party and you're like, hey, let's all have a drink. It's like, that's, that's not great, right? That is, that's a rebellion that doesn't help anybody. But the light, party number one is shooting for here, challenges authority to affect social change uh, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. Well, I could claim that for myself, spiritually. Interesting. Party number two, the warrior. <laughs> Woof. The shadow, though. Trading ethical principles for victory at any cost. Now, let me see. Have we seen that in the world? Oh, only for the past, like, what, 10,000 years? Uh, indifference to the suffering inflicted by others. I think we know that that exists in the world. So here's the opportunity, party number two, to develop strength, skill, discipline, and toughness of will. Way to hear this. Heroism. Stoicism, which isn't as boring as it sounds, uh, and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego. And I would um, amend that a little to say integrating the ego, because the ego is not the enemy. It's the most dormant part of the soul, right? It's the egg compared to the caterpillar, the, the personality, the cocoon, the soul, and the butterfly that is the higher self, integrating all of that. And true love is a way of doing that. It's just another way of talking about ascension or, you know, whatever you want to call it. So I like this. I mean, these two, obviously, a rebel and a warrior. Sounds like an episode of Xena. So let's, uh, let's see how this goes with uh, the mythic tarot. Lower three chakra is going to get him face down first. I, I, I want to be as surprised as you are when they hit the table. Because uh, I do love a good Scorpio mystery. I'm a big, big, big appreciator of Agatha Christie and all of its forms. Big time. Oh, the finger moved. Please take a nice deep breath. You big Miss Marple. Still point. My God's override. As I call upon my gods of water, the sign of Scorpio, there you are, powers of the West, whoopsie, uh, beloved gods of fixed water, eighth house, Scorpio dynamic, money, sex, power, other people's resources, mystery, mystery transformation, Hades, god of the underworld, hot. Please, uh, ten cards, face down, Celtic cross, for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Suns, and Crosswatchers who are watching this video and drawn to this reading. Uh, we've got party number one in this contract, Rebel in the Eighth, what's going on? Outside in, inside out, lower three chakras, same thing, warrior uh, at the cross. What's uh, th the core, what they may not be aware of, subconscious influences, but nonetheless there. What's in their behind? What's in the Scorpios behind where they came from? What got them to this cross? Roads. Uh, what's hovering over this? The crown. Like, it's there, it's in the air, but a choice or a decision has to be made at the crossroads. What's that about? Uh, what is before them just around the river bend, just around the corner? Should they deal with that wisely and well? It's before them on the path. What is the universal learning template or the lesson <laughs> that they are learning here? 
on the path of true love. We see that from the outside in. What about if we were to bump into these two walking along the street, right? What would they kind of look like? Lower three chakras. What's that vibe? Uh, the destiny to be alchemized from fate. There's the alchemy. The lead is the fate. What you can't change. The gold is what you do. If you take the hero's journey, conquer all, heal all, break all curses uh, on the path of true love as a hero, one would think. And the most probable outcome to the true love timeline uh, of this uh, Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign Crosswatcher, Rebel, Warrior contract in this Path of True Love read. Ooh, I just peaked. <laughs> All right, I know how it ends, at least this chapter. So, party number one with the Rebel in the Eighth has the Seven of Cups, and we know the Seven of Cups can be lots of emotional options. I will also say, when it's that many, this could also be a lot of influence emotionally from other people, plural, meaning family, uh, co-workers, particularly if this is the Scorpio. You don't have to choose right now which one you are with just a few cards uh, being turned. Uh, but things might seem a little cloudy, like, you should do this. No, you should do this. No, you should do this. Sometimes the toxicity of the well-meaning uh, can really jam an empath's uh, circuit in those lower three chakras. Uh, uh, for the warrior archetype, uh, uh, whoa, the Eight of Cups. Ooh, the Seven of Cups and the Eight of Cups. Now, since we've got both of uh, these on the table now, the suit of cups in the Mythic Tarot is the myth of Eros in Psyche. A romantic true love story, if ever there was one, spoiler alert, it ends up, well, I mean, it's only like the Bronze Age, right? <laughs> I guess. Uh, uh, Eros and Psyche, Eros, the god of erotic love, son of Aphrodite and Ares, hence the bow and arrow from his dad. Uh, and so this is, you know... Uh, well along the Seven of Cups uh, and uh, Psyche, which is Greek for the word butterfly as well as the word soul, uh, going to Aphrodite and say, please, what can I do to get him back? I fucked up. <laughs> but she didn't, really. The conditions were a little jacked from the beginning, so she sends her down here into the Aiden. You want to talk a warrior going into the underworld to get some rapid wrinkle repair from Persephone, and you got to admit, it works. <laughs> a little touch of amber Rosia in there. Does, the only crows around this house are uh, crow's feet are literal crows. So uh, not necessarily a walking away. Everybody always wants to make the Eight of Cups walking away, walking away. It's more like walking into, so either one of these could be a Scorpio in that sense with that water element on the outside. What's underneath all of this? This just came up in the Libra read. If you have or are dealing with somebody with Libra, I'm going to say this is the exact same position. The fool, Dionysus, jumping off the cliff. Not the end, not the beginning, in between the worlds, right? That place of mystery. It's you're not quite in yesterday, you're not quite in tomorrow. You are in that still point, the leap of faith. Now, I would say... Uh, with these first uh, two we have here with the Eight of Cups, if we were going to give that in between these two a specific chakra, I would certainly say second or sacral chakra element of water, right? So they might be empathing the hell out of each other, or, you know, maybe just that's a one-way flow. But really, pay attention to all of your lower three chakras of how to navigate this in the physical world. There, every chakra has its own intuitive voice, but you got to listen to it and up here is talky, talky, thinky. Down here is feely, feely, right? Your second chakra will say, <laughs> grunts, as an example, right? This is saying all three. So it's not, you might, we'll see what else hits the table, obviously. But there is about to be a brand, brand new beginning here. But it's going to take a leap of faith. It's going to take uh, a lot of, perhaps, innocence. <laughs> Scorpio, good luck with that, <laughs> to do that. What got you here? Oh, the Nine of Cups. Now, the Nine of Cups, I know, wish fulfillment and all of that. But to me, the Nine of Cups is the natural uh, progression from the Eight of Cups going down into the underworld, finding the Ninth Cup. This is, for me, about not just I love myself, but really being emotionally whole. W-H-O-L-E. Are you at the ten? Are your cups overflowing? Is it ecstasy? Is it bliss? Not quite yet, but it's good. And that should be, could be everybody's wish fulfillment. Let me just be 
happy as I am, and this behind you speaks very well, but now let us see how much water is on this table for a Scorpio read. What's hovering over this? Come here. <laughs> These cards do not want to come off of the table. Oh, Belinda Carlisle, you are the sun. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, Apollo and Dionysus. These are the two gods of, uh, uh, oh my god, I can't believe the name of the temple went out of my head. The Oracle of Delphi, right? He's got it for part of the year, and he's got it. They, these two love each other very much. They're fun bros, man, right? Uh, uh, rock and roll and classical, right? Jimi Hendrix and Prince Vivaldi and, uh, and uh, fill in the blank, Beethoven. Uh, <laughs> twerking and ballet. All right, there we go. I could do that all day long. I won't. Uh, so look, there is healing. There is happiness. There is light. There is truth here hovering by but a choice must be made, and that would make sense, going down for party number two, taking the warrior's hero's journey and be heroic about this. I'm going to be stoic, and I'm going to heal myself. I can totally get that vibe. Taking the leap of faith, uh, and uh, uh, then being able to make that decision where it might be the rebel's like, I don't know if I want to do this. I could do that, or I could do that, or I could do that, or I could do that. Either one of these could be a Scorpio come to thunk of it. Oh, where are they headed? Ha ha ha, the hanged man. So, nothing but water and spirit, uh, major arcana cards on the table, three and three. Come on now, Scorps. This is Prometheus bound. So, he stole fire from the gods and gave it to humanity so that humanity would not be as dependent on the gods. They didn't like that. He's a titan, too. It was the younger ones, the Olympians, brought him down to Tartarus, hung him upside down from a rock, and I think it was a vulture or an eagle or something or other, came and pecked out his liver every day. Ouchie, right? Eventually, I'm sure they became friends, you know? I'm remembering what else are you going to do? That's a long-term relationship. Uh, it grew back, you know? That's the thing about being an immortal. <laughs> Shit grows back. Um... Mm, liver. Uh, 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 so this is about sacrifice. This is about surrender. This is about surrendering often uh, a point of view. That's why I prefer the image of uh, All Father Odin on the world tree of Ygrassel, popped out an eye, gave it to the Norns for the runes and other cash and prizes, right? Willing to see things differently. Is this the end of something? No, it's the hanged man. And what is that? What is being seen differently here? We have no air cards on the table, but the two major arcana cards we do have, the leap of faith with the sun. It feels like if that sun is really embraced one or both sides, it doesn't matter. You can't help but see things differently, but you can resist it. Mm. Right? To see the truth. Apollo is a god of truth. He's also a god of plagues, so, you know, don't lie, right? <laughs> healers can't lie, and he, uh, what is it? Liars can't heal, and healers can't lie. I mean, healers can lie, but in that moment, they ain't healing, right? You need reality. You need things out into the light of day. But if there is something in place here, uh, that is, it's going to have to be surrendered. It's going to have to be let go of, and it's going to have to be a sacrifice. But look, sacrifice is such a negative connotation because of the current meanings of the word. It means to make sacred, right? Think of the sacral chakra, right? It's second chakra, uh, all of that. I'm going to say three water cards and three spirit cards. This is quite a uh, Scorpio read. Uh, the lesson. Ace of Pentacles. There you go. Nice match to the Fool here. From the outside looking in, this is a brand new potential. A healthy egg corn, so to speak, that you can crack under your heel. You know, feed it to a squirrel. It'll end up fertilizer for a tree somewhere. Or you can plant it and nurture it and allow it to grow. That's all we can say about that. I could say this is the beginning of a whole new lesson. But, uh, you know, this is experiences in the physical world. It's totally up to you. And by the way, this is Poseidon, a very scorpionic god of water. You know, <laughs> the Mariana Trench and all of that. <laughs> That's a great drag name, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the stage of the incomparable Mariana Trench. Uh, and her Technicolor drag coat. And what does this look like from the outside? How about the Ace of Cups? 
This is leaning towards the romantic, I'm just going to say. The pure amount of water on here, if the 10 shows up, it's a lock. So, from the outside looking in, right, we'd say, oh, this relationship, oh, look at this, such a, such a potential, oh, I wish you luck, right? You would. Uh, but with that, that hangman, there may have to be some belief systems surrendered here. And we'll see. And that's why part two, the extended, we go behind the scenes with the heart, third, third eye crown using Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Ah, the destiny. The destiny and the fate where you are is assessing your loyalties. The Three of Wands, very solar plexus. What you will, what you won't, what you do, what you don't. Your self-esteem as a verb, your boundaries as a noun, right? What are you willing to wait for? What are you willing to commit yourself to to continue the journey? This is Jason and the Argonauts. Essentially, he took the quest, but now he's getting the loyalty of some royalty to help him uh, return the Golden Fleece. Uh, how does this puppy end? Yeah, I saw this before. Now, don't freak. It is the tower, but it is also Poseidon who's given you the lesson. Both cards here. So, look, I like the tower. It's followed by the star for starters, uh, but it is a faulty foundation that has been everything built on top of it brought down. How is that not sort of the same thing? He said, oh, but I thought... Oh, but I thought, oh, but I thought enlightenment is the tower card very often, and it's not a gentle process, but it can be an epiphany. Oh, uh, when I teach tarot, and I do, I'll get back to teaching it someday, uh, the, the Drawing the Circle Productions Tarot Readers Certification Course, yeah, no, I'm not in the mood. Um, but I say it's like someone who doesn't believe in ghosts, oh, that's all bullshit, and then one morning, right? Their great grandmother is standing at the foot of their bed. She's been dead thirty years, and she's in the still not right. Like oh, yeah, grandma, right? It was just a bad dream, but it keeps happening, right? <laughs> Little sesame cookies scattered around the house. <laughs> Little pinolis. Oh, good God! So yeah, what happens to all that disbelief? Gone, gone, and that's why you can't have true love without truth. I don't care if this is romantic, if it's family, if it's coworker. I don't see lying necessarily necessarily here, but I do see maybe there are some illusions. Uh, perception is not always truth, right? The sun does not rise in the east and set in the west if the planet turns on an axis. And spoiler alert, this one does, just saying, I know there are flat earthers, please don't cancel me, but whatever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this could be a very, very shocking outcome, but who's to say that that is positive or negative? And that's why we have the extended read. So, we are done with Tarot Town for part one. Let's get to Whispers of Love from the Whispers of Love Oracle. What a coincidence. Angela Hartfield, we will be using uh, her Whispers of Lord Ganesh to help remove the obstacles between lead and gold as well as you're getting a Journey of Love Oracle, an Archangel Fire Oracle, Blue Angel Oracle, one for Archangel Michael. He summarizes all the, the Mythic Tarot, the Kuan Yin Oracle. She will summarize all of uh, the ten uh, Celtic Cross that we do uh, with the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Then we're ending with Animal, Vegetable, and Mineral, the Divine Animals Oracle, the Magical Herb Oracle, and the Crystal Oracle. It's quite a bit, and they're lovely. They seem to be clicking like crazy. So... Let's do this. Let's uh, see what your higher selves have to say. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Still point. Higher selves override. As I call to the higher selves of party number one with the rebel archetype in the eighth and party number two with the warrior, uh, archetype in the eighth for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers. There we go. Watching this video, drawn to this reading. Party number one, Warrior in the eighth. What's the whisper of love? Higher selves, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. And uh, what's going on for the warrior? Party number two, the guidance, the grace, what they need, the information, inspiration, insight they need on the path of true love. Get the fuck out. Spiritual connection. Spiritual connection. This relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. Is that a rubber stamp of romance? No, but this is pretty close without being the romance card. The warrior. Union of hearts. 
there, uh, this is a connection of love that defies explanation. And I've been in plenty of those. I'm like, why? Of all the people in the world, why do I love you? <laughs> a Kate Bush song but written by Prince, by the way. Excellent album, The Sensual World, right? I think that's Sensual World. I know, they'll all get over running up that hill eventually, although that was the song that made me fall in love with Kate Bush. But anyway, so look, a spiritual connection. This is a past life thing most relationships are, because a lot of us have been incarnating since shit started crawling out of the ocean and walking. You know what I mean? Some of us are original star seeds we're so fucking salty. Oh, I feel naked. Um, but that union of the hearts... Do, party number two, do not expect this to make sense right now. That would make sense with the hanged man and the tower, right? So it looks like the warrior uh, is, is might have a little bit of a heavier haul on this one, going into the underworld with the Eight of Cups. But if that's the Scorpio, come on, you know you already have a condo there, right? You probably have rental properties down there. <laughs> Scorpio, I do. That's because I'm a Pisces moon. That river stick speed pass was the smartest investment, gotta say. Okay, last card down. Last card down. Let's get that Matt Con healing mantra again. It doesn't matter which one you are in this party number one or party number two, as well as some of my clients have said, you know, I watched that video and I am on both sides. So they see it as a divine feminine or divine masculine a balance within themselves because that's unity and that's Jungian psychology as well. So that's a wise way to do this too. So mirroring, mirroring. Let's get this mantra. Please take a nice deep breath. Oh, still point. Ascended Master's Override. <laughs> As I call to the Ascended Masters of True Love, and if people had any idea how many of you there are, it's like standing in a football stadium with all of you here. Please, beloved ones, you who have already completed the hero's journey of the path of true love over and over again, Please, one card in clarity for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video drawn to this reading. The perfect healing mantra to help them alchemize the shadow to light, the lead to gold, the pain to peace, the toxic to healthy, the fear to love on the path of true love in this rebel warrior contract. Asking for angelic support. My angels respond when I am open and authentic about how I feel. I've had this deck since it was published. I know all of these mantras, but I certainly don't have what's in the bookie book memorized. My angels respond when I am open and authentic about how I feel. And look, I'm a witch and I'm a teacher and I've been a high priest and all of that. There are people who don't like working with angels, so please feel free. My gods, my guides, whatever. Because it's all the same thing. Angel means messenger of light or messenger of God or shining message, um, ancient Hebrew. Uh, yeah, so translation, 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 location, location, uh, location, asking, asking for angelic support. My angels respond when I am open and authentic about how I feel, and how's that for truth? Again, you do not have to put everything on social media, right? Nobody or Scorpio is what I mean. It's like, you don't, nobody needs to know this, Scorpio. You can absolutely do this, and I think particularly for the warrior and for the rebel with this emotionality, you can say, I don't know. I don't know how I feel right now. But are you willing to find out is really what's underneath all of this. When asking for angelic support, you are requesting solutions from a higher realm of consciousness. Such a realm of consciousness works in accordance with free will to help you face your experiences instead of helping you avoid them. Now look, every hero will try and avoid some danger, obviously. That's what intuition is for, particularly lower three chakras if you want to see it that that way. But this is about the stuff usually of what's going on on the inside. Uh, rather than believe that the cause of your feelings must be changed or eliminated, it is essential to ask your angels for better ways of viewing the feelings that keep 
getting triggered because each trigger represents a healing, you are more than likely to feel the presence of your angels when asking for their help to face your most difficult emotions. In other words, to be authentic, to be truthful. This is what true love takes. Otherwise, you deny it, you pretend it's something else, and back into the shadow it goes. It goes right back into lead. So, lead is just gold that wants to shine. Oh, not pretty. Um... In order to access angelic assistance, it is important to be with your feelings so your angels know where support is needed most. I mean, they know, but they need you to, to be honest, right? Because there is no healing without truth. Right? Liars don't heal. Liars can't heal, but healers really can't lie uh, on the journey. Uh, this mantra is ideal for unraveling the spiritual ego, which can be very superstitious. Well, but if I do this and then this and this will happen, the ego just wants what it wants, darlings. Uh, and the warrior here in particular, going into the underworld perhaps, right? Not to conquer, but to heal and integrate the ego. Um, giving up patterns of avoidance uh, and being a better receiver, which is the water element, all of the water signs. And by the way, the earth signs, feminine, receptive, right? Where Aaron and fire are active if you want to play that dualistic word game there. Because we do. Because we have a language, a common language. Uh, but remember, <laughs> meanings change over the centuries, big time. So, uh, let's put this together in a blessimation, a combination of a blessing and a summation. I end all my reads this way. Because blessing is a good way to move energy, right? You just take a minute. Uh, so it is my honor and my pleasure and my spiritual practice to do things, because the more you bless, the more blessings you have. Please take a nice deep breath. Then we'll jump over to the extended. Still point. Pantheonic override. And we end as we began. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers who are watching this video and drawn to this reading, may they be blessed with all that they need on the path of true love. So that party number one can challenge authority to affect social change and reject spiritual systems that do not serve their inner needs, considering the many emotional options in front of them. And so that party number two with the warrior archetype can embrace their strength, skill, discipline, and toughness of will, making the hard choices, heroism, stoicism, and self-sacrifice in integrating and healing their ego with perhaps a descent into the underworld, walking deeper into the self than away from anything right now. And they might find down in there uh, this new opportunity hasn't quite launched yet. They do have free will to jump or not to jump. The act of faith, the leap of faith. Oh, no, 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 no. Because uh, the likelihood is, is that they might very well take that leap because we got the Nine of Cups here behind them and may they be blessed with the wholeness, the healing, whatever, even if this is the two of them together in happier times and now they're going through a bit of a rough path, this is all very healable as something will be revealed. Not getting a horrible feeling about this read, particularly not with the sun literally hovering over all of this lightning, lifting, healing, bringing happiness to every other card in the spread and that's been said for decades and it still remains true and yet once that light and that healing comes, things will be seen differently. It's a question of free will as to whether they will surrender <laughs> to that and sacrifice perhaps their very long-held point of view, but I keep seeing that. Oh, 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 I didn't know, oh, I didn't know, oh, all right, and things move forward because this lesson is a beginning and there is a potential here, a healthy seed that can be sown for other seeds to then be grown with the Ace of Cups, Aphrodite, sweet and flighty, hanging out at seaside with a see-through night in a big old cocktail, the cup of love, the seed of emotion. This feels like something brand spanking new, even if they've done this before. And on the hero's journey, absolutely, each one manifests their destiny by being really clear about who they want to be in the world, what their boundaries are, their honor code, what they will, what they won't, what they do, what they don't. And this chapter doesn't necessarily conclude. It's definitely a cliffhanger. 
with the tower, Poseidon, the Earth Shaker, the god of the waters, one of my gods of Scorpio for sure uh, breaking this down, taking it down to its foundation and enlightenment. A drastic shift all at once could be the kiss of true love that heals all wounds, that conquers all, that breaks all curses, past, present, and future. So may they be blessed that party number one gets that this is a spiritual connection. They have done this before, but not always in the same pattern. We're not always parents and lovers in every single life. It, why would it be that way? And so that party number two can get that there is no logical explanation for this. This is a union of hearts. It is a soul heart thing. As they both do the shadow work, the shadow to light, the lead to gold, the pain to peace, the toxic to healthy, alchemizing their fear to love and their allusions to truth, which is certainly here on the table asking for angelic support, because their angels respond when they are open and authentic about how they feel, not what they think about what they feel or what someone else might think about what they feel, but how they feel. Free confessional, free therapy, just call and they're there. So may they be blessed with all that they need to heal, to grow, to learn, to evolve, to be the happiest, healthiest, wealthiest, bravest, wisest selves that they can be on the hero's journey of the path of true love for their well-being, for the well-being of all, and with harm to none. As we will it, so let it be done. So mote it be. And so it is. Yay. All right. Buckle up for part two, my patrons on Patreon, because this is going to be a doozy. I like it. Again, do I know for sure it is romantic? I'm going to say it seems to have that level of risk, and particularly with the whispers of love. But we will see. And if you'd like to check me out on Patreon, seven day free trial, uh, seeker or human. You get the daily check-ins, you get all of the extended readings, including this one free for seven days. But if you want that extensive discount on private sessions with me, you gotta be a subscriber. I think that's only fair, don't you? Plus my Scorpio sister, Pam, would come for me if I offered that for people who aren't actually, because she's on there, she would know. So uh, yeah, come check it out. We're having such a field day there. And we have a shop. If you'd like to check out the digital stuff, to be honest with you, all of the digital uh, products, they're also on my website. We'll talk about that next. But I made it cheaper for Patreon, because it's more fun, I don't know why. So yeah, so come Patreon on Patreon. Just a hoot over there. But if you'd like to book me for one of them private sessions with or without Patreon, there is a video in the description box called Booking Private Sessions with Mal that includes spiritual counseling, which has the half hour of power in it, which is pretty formidable when needed, uh, as well as readings, uh, whether we're Zoom recording it or I'm traveling to you or, you know, however it works out, a party, all of that is explained in the video. It's about 11 minutes. My mom likes it. We're keeping it, right? Uh, and I say over and over and over, I will never, and I have never turned anybody away uh, because of lack of funds. That's not how I roll. That's not how I am. And the gods would snatch away my gifts if I started doing that. So fuck that with a bucket. No, fuck it with a bucket. Nope. Uh, but certainly, you can go to my website, drawingthatcircle.com, and go to the store, which is usually over here on a laptop, and see all of it. Uh, spiritual counseling, uh, reading packages, all of it is in writing. I would say black and white, but it's really colorful. So, uh, you know, you can see it there if you want to look at the numbers and look at the details, as Scorpios usually do. But reach out. I've been doing Celtic crossbreds since I'm 12 years old. I'm going to be 55 next month at the time of this timeless recording. I know. I don't look at thanks. I'm telling you, there are perks to going to the underworld on the on the regular. Her rapid wrinkle repair really is rather rapid, which is a lot of alliteration. Uh, so I love you, my Scorpios. I have an older brother who's a Scorpio. I've always had a Scorpio in my life, it seems. And I get along well with them. I'm a Pisces moon. We tend to understand each other and give each other space instinctually. But if you need some help, if you uh, want a reading or whatever, just reach out and uh, I am here to help. So wishing you all the very, very best and the very, very blessed my beloved Scorpio collective sun moon rising Venus signs and cross watchers oh, we'll see you in the extended heal hell farewell and blessed blessed be